Hey guys, this is Thomas Mashad. Welcome back to Foundations of Web Design. In this video tutorial, we're going to return to our folder of the Chapter 2 text download. It's right below this video. You can download it, uncompress the folder, and we're going to be dealing now with lists.html. So let's open that up into our text editor. In this document, once again, I've supplied all of the HTML elements, the global elements that we start out with. And here what we're going to look at are a couple of different types of lists. We have ordered and unordered lists. The first one we're going to take a look at is the unordered list. It's pretty common uh, to maybe have like a grocery list where we go and we need to shop for milk, eggs, bread, cereal, apples, whatever it might be. And you know, within a store, we don't re always remember as we're making the list what comes first, second, and third. Sometimes we're just kind of wandering around the store. So let's kind of mark this up and see what an unordered list looks like within the browser. And the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and uh, make a, uh, a heading for our grocery list. So let's say if we'll make this as a header one, that's our main topic of this list. Let me close that with a proper header one tag. And then we have milk, eggs, bread, cereal, and apples. Each one of these is an item in a list. So it's what's called a list item. So we'll mark those with an li element, opening and closing tag. So remember, once we put in that forward slash, we can hit tab and it'll automatically close. One of the things that uh, you might learn to do is take as many shortcuts as you possibly can. Within Komodo, one shortcut that we could just do is just simply copy the opening list item. So we can do a command C and then paste that in front of each item. And then we'll take the closing element, we'll copy that command C or control C and we'll paste that after each item. Now by itself, if we simply, I'm going to do a save. So I'm going to do a file save or a command S or a control S on the keyboard. And I'm gonna open this up into a browser. And this time, um, let's go ahead and open it up. I'm gonna open it up into Chrome. If you have it installed, choose Chrome as well. If you don't, choose one of your other applications. I'm gonna click on preview. Now you'll notice that by default, just putting in the list items that I already have bullets going right next to each list item. It's a list item, it's an unordered list, and that's what the way that it would look. But in order to making sure that it has more meaningful markup, we just want to define this list as an unordered list. And how do we do that? I'm going to switch back over to my text editor real quick. And after my header one tag closes, I'm going to create a new line and I'm going to put in an UL tag. And that signifies my unordered list. It's defining this list as an unordered list. And then after my list item, I am going to put in my closing tag. I'll save that. I'll come back into my browser. I'll hit refresh. And now you'll notice that there's a little bit more styling that went on. It actually indented onto the left hand side. So it's added in some padding or some margin within that left hand side. And also created some space after apples. It helps to uh, signify that there's a break return in there. So pretty much what it did for us right here was it created some uh, spacing over onto that left hand side. So make sure when you are marking up your list that you define it either as an unordered list, the UL tag, which we just did here, or the OL tag for the ordered list, which we'll take a look at next. So by default, the unordered list shows our list items with bullets over to the left hand side. So let's take a look at the ordered list for the assembly instructions. Assembly, uh, we might want to go from step one to step two to step three, or we want to make sure that we add in these certain things, such as uh, when we're assembling a, a document. Uh, so let's say that for the assembly instructions, we're going to also make that a header level one. So maybe we have a page dealing with assembly instructions that could be assembling a website. Uh, first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up a text editor. So all of these are list items. So once again, I'm going to simply come up to my previous list item. I'm going to copy that open tag. So I'll put all of those in. And 
after add global elements, these are also list items because we want to add the, the following items, the doc type, the HTML tag, the head tag, meta tag, title tag, body, and then finally we want to add some content. So all of those are list items, but what we want to define this as is an ordered list. So we'll put an OL tag at the top of our list, and at the close of our list, we'll put in a closing oops, ordered list. Now it says that, hey, I wanted to close a list item. Got to go back up in here and certainly close all of our list items. So let's quickly do that. Simply copy and pasting. You'll notice that we can get through it pretty quickly. Other text editors allow us to like select content and then wrap uh, an HTML element around that content, which is really nice. You can do that with Sublime Text or TextMate that I also showed you back in the earlier videos. But with Komodo, we don't have that option at this moment. There are plugins that we can try to install that uh, can help us do that, but for now, we're just gonna deal with some of the basics of Komodo. All right, so now that we have that, I'm going to hit Save, Command S or Control S, and let's go back to the browser, and we're going to preview this. If the browser was closed, all you have to simply do is come back up in here. We're gonna select the browser again and click on preview. And now that this is updated, you'll notice that by default, the ordered list puts in numbers, one through however many steps that we have. So our first step was gonna to be to open the text editor. Second is to create a new document. Third is to add the global elements. But the one thing that we have here is that we have the doc type, the header, the, the so forth and so on, that we're all really subtopics of adding the global elements. So another thing that you can do is to nest lists. And let's take a look and see how that's done. So switch back over to your text editor. When we nest an, uh, an a list item within another list item, say that we want to add all of our global elements, and these are all of our global elements right in here, that I take the closing list item, I'm going to cut this, so I'm gonna do an edit, cut, or Command X or Control X on your keyboard. So I'm removing that closing list item, and I'm going to move it all the way down past all of my global elements right here, okay? And then what I'm going to do is that I am going to create another ordered list. Okay, or we could make it as an unordered list if we wanted to. So now adding global items, and I want to add all of these global items to this list. And these are now sublists of this parent list. So let me save that. And then I'm going to switch back over to Chrome and I'm gonna hit refresh. And now you'll notice that the counting for doc type starts after this parent list item. So we have one, two, three, and then we start out, the global elements are the doc type, the head, or the HTML, the head, the meta, the title, and the body. So you'll notice that it starts counting once it's starting to be nested. Now you can actually nest within nests. So let's take a look at that because the meta and the title are actually kind of like within the head element. So we're gonna take the closing list item tag here. We're going to cut it, so that's Command X or Control X. After the title, we're gonna hit space a couple of times or hit return a couple of times. And after the head element, or after, after the head uh, text here, I am going to create another ordered list. And we'll go ahead and close that ordered list. So I'll save this one more time, and then we'll come back into our browser. I'll hit refresh, and once again, that the meta and title have their own ordered list, so they're gonna start their counting at one. There are ways that we can style our ordered and unordered list using CSS that we'll get into later on, but for now I wanted to show you how a nested element works, and especially with an ordered list that the counting begins at the child, wherever it's at, so, or the main parent. The main parent here, we have our main list, and then we have a nested list, and we also have another nested list. So this list is nested within this list as well as this list, <laughs> okay?
And what's really cool is that we can say that, okay, within the head, we have the meta and we have the title, but also within all of this area, we have the, the doc type, the HTML, the head, and the body. And then finally, we want to add our content, and that's to our overall set of instructions. So those are our two lists, ordered and unordered. You can nest within lists as well. It doesn't matter if you have an unordered list or an ordered list. As a matter of fact, you can even have an unordered list within an ordered list if you wanted to or needed to, okay, and it just places the bullets in there. You'll notice that it places a little bit differently when it gets a little bit further in. It switches from the circular bullets to a square bullet, all right? So, like I said, we'll look at more of this later on when we're dealing with CSS, but for now, these are your two basic types of lists. In another video, right after this one, if you wanna move over to it, we're gonna talk about description lists as well.